So good afternoon, everyone. I think we'll give it a go. We are still missing one of our speakers, but hopefully we'll manage to, to get in at some point. Um, welcome also to some of the viewers in the background. And uh, yeah, we'll make use of the chat. We'll check also if there's any questions or any comments, please use it um, as much as possible. Uh, try to keep this as interactive as possible. Um, I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Diana Tulbure and I'm working for ACOM for about five years. Um, and Marcus and I had uh, the idea of running this um, this table, this round table of digitalization. Uh, and it came actually from more like, okay, so where are we are now? Where are we going? And what is it actually that we call digitalization today? So I think that's what we're gonna focus our discussion around today. And I've seen, uh, I've joined some of the sessions also in, in the morning. Um, and I've actually heard somebody saying that even to get to a green energy or into a green building, actually, uh, all we need is actually to really utilize and optimize the way we use our digital tools. So it really spreads across really different sectors, this digitalization and the digital tools that we're talking about. And it's really about, I guess, knowing how to use them and how to yeah, work with them and where, really, where, where do we want to go with them. Um, so I'm going to give a minute to each one of you just to inter quickly introduce yourself uh, and then we'll, uh, yeah, we'll start uh, the discussion. Marcus, do you want to give it a go? Yeah, sure. So as Diana mentioned, my name is Marcus Estamanis and I joined uh, ACOM recently, so back in July, and um, I'm overseeing our building and places team in Germany. And then I would hand over to Simon. Yes, thank you, Marcus. Hello, I'm Simon Harfst. Uh, I'm also from Germany, from Frankfurt. I'm working at the Gustav Zech Stiftung. It's a kind of family office for a well-known German entrepreneur and his family. And um, in our family office, um, I'm responsible for uh, real estate developments. I'm a senior real estate developer. And we are firmly investing in real estate assets and our own real estate development and in this function I'm doing the whole process of real estate development from investment through design construction till operations. Thanks. Antonio. Okay, I go next and Antonio Brunner, I work for Deutsche Bank and I'm globally responsible for our digital workplace program. And in that program, I look at how we could digitalize our office space to make smarter, better decisions from a corporate real estate point of view, but also to enhance our employee experience through the means of digitalization, but also through the means of providing a better and more um, suitable office space to our employees. Jasper, they can get in there. Yes, hi, I'm Jasper. I'm the founder and the strategy lead of uh, OMRT. Uh, we basically build digital applications, computational design applications to serve the real estate sector in a certain way that they get this data-driven information during their design and maintenance process. Uh, basically to make the right decisions to take integral actions about multiple technical disciplines at the same time. So basically engineering uh, works on steroids, we call it. Last but not least, uh, hello to everyone. My name is Bernard. I'm working for Steelcage, which is the largest office furniture manufacturer across the globe. I'm in the global team supporting large workplace. Okay, thank you all for uh, for your introduction. Um, I would start with uh, yeah with a quite a general question, um, and um, I would let you think about the what do we really call digitalization, but also what's the importance of digitalization um, in the different stages, so conception planning, but also and I think Antonio mentioned earlier as well going then to the user operations of the building, but also maintenance. So what are the different points within each phases, the importance of using digital tools within each, each one of the phases? Um, and Dale was supposed to talk a little bit around this and he's, he didn't manage still to get to get in, but um, 
Marcus, I would put you a bit on the spot there. Um, could you start a bit around that? Um, yeah, I can try. So um, basically, I would say digitalization um, is related to the to the um, to the use and to the current state that the people have in mind. So you always have people who are more familiar with the topic or not. So basically, I heard already people saying that um, that we are now able to use Teams, for example, for our meetings and chats. That this is the digitalization already. And then we have others in the room, like uh, yeah, for example, Antonio and maybe Antonio can join me answering this this question. Who are yeah, in, let's say investigating um, a user experience also driven by um, the support of sensors in in the building, or also to try to. Um, yeah, get more efficiency in the in the building, um, also provided by by the information that we can collect from sensors, and um, maybe we should also step back a bit already during the design process. So how can we um, use the digitalization for the design process of the building? And this is also maybe where where Simon could jump in um, and give us a, a feedback in this regards. And maybe I make a pause here and say, yep, yeah, maybe Simon, you go first because I saved your name last. <laughs> um, okay, thank you. Um, first of all, um, I think digitalization is not just um, anything related and familiar with um, with technical tools or PCs or internet or something like that. Uh, of course, that's a that's a vehicle for that uh, for this change of paradigms. Uh, we have actually, but I think the digitalization um, through this or through these tools or through these um, uh, processes um, also begins to change how we work and how we um, uh, how we behave. Yeah, and I think of course you have on the one hand you have all these tools, you have these technical equipment and so on. Yeah, but I think um, during the digitalization everything changes also we change and how we work how we live how we behave yeah? and i think that's the main um at the main criteria or the main um the main footstep yeah? digitalization will bring to our all lives if i could just add something simon there i heard earlier today as well in the session the the, the, the difference between digitization and digitalization and how actually we sometimes tend to talk about digitization, whereas we actually want to talk about digitalization. Digitization is actually create creation of those tools and transforming it into a digital tool or a tool that we actually don't have in a digital way. But digitalization is actually using those tools in an optimized way um, and in an integrated way and apply it to actually to your industry. So yeah, it's, it's really interesting um, how you put it. As well. yeah. So um, to, to, to me, the question is, what do you yeah. actually mean by digital tools, right? Because when I look now into, uh, into the real estate, uh, digital tools may be related to uh, um, have an efficiently climate or lightning control or maybe intelligent infrastructure. But that, I, I think there should be more behind this one, right? So um, when, you, when you think about your personal life, how digitalization grab you by using um, your phones, your tablets, and so on. And yeah. the, the question to me is how architecture and at least offices um, can support this beyond that the lightning is switching on and off uh, while I'm in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed, yeah. Um, Antonio, if you could give us a bit of a more insights into yeah what what Marcus mentioned earlier a bit into the design process, um, yeah the user experience in terms of I, I think I fully agree, and I think it's a very important differentiation between digitization and digitalization, because I I do think now already today and there are many digital tools in place that support how we manage our design, how we support our design processes, also how we can visualize um, our interiors, right? Virtual reality and so on. Um, and, and that all enables 
users that are not familiar with a real estate and, and design processes to get a future outlook how things gonna um, gonna look like. Also, also BIM uh, simplifies processes and, and and supports us coordinating um, the the design process. But but I think. Um, it's not only about digitalizing it be, for the sake of digitalizing. I, I think there's a very important part that we also look at the way we evolve our processes and how we in the future want to approach our design um, projects, right? Because um, what we basically did to some extent today, we digitalized our current processes. So we're using them to make our current processes a bit simpler and a bit easier. But um, what I think we really need to do is evolve our processes to become more flexible, to become more agile and more iterative by using our digital tools. Um, and, and I think if you now apply that to an, an optimal office space and how an optimal office space looks like, um, we, we are actually facing a, a, a very big challenge, right? I always define an office space as to be optimal when it meets the, the requirement of the users in this current moment. But that is not how we design our office space, right? The requirements change throughout the life cycles. They change from the moment we define the project brief until they move in and they continue to change after they move in throughout the life cycle of, of the office space. So just by, by that fact, we actually never have an optimal building for the users. They're always operating in some sort of a compromise in there. And I think that is where we really need to start looking at how we could now bring together the possibility of a digitalized of digitalization, digital tools, right? Evolve our processes that we could make our office space more flexible and more agile that throughout the life cycle of an office, we could actually go through that multiple iteration of changing um, business requirements, right? So I think um, there's really great opportunities, but I do think that we're only scratching truly at the surface of the possibilities what we could truly do in, in actually providing a better processes and a better workspace for our employees at, at, at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more with you, Antonio. Uh, to give maybe an uh, example to this, that's right now we are involved in a research where we actually do, uh, where we check basically what, are, what is user behavior within an office, for instance. How do different types of company behave? So, the one wants to open the window and the other ones have to shade it down because they like programming in the dark or something like we do, for instance. And so based on these user profiles, you can kind of use, for instance, tools like machine learning. But then again, it's just, again, the measure to go to a certain new insight. What kind of users do we can we expect over a lifetime on office? And based on that, you can then further expand that to, OK, what type of facade would we now have to implement to cover at least 60? 80% of the people or the tenants that we expect in this office. I think then you really get, uh, I think the one of the main items with the digitalization and those those tools you get is that you get really, really early on uh, knowledge on deciding today what's best for a long term. That you kind of, what we, what we did before was that you design something, you think about something, you implement it, and then you check, did it do it correctly, yes or no. But with digital tools, you can maybe much more estimate up front what's good or yet or not. I agree with you, Jasper. I, I, I definitely agree on, on, on this one. Um, we at Steelcase, we are trying to look more detailed onto this one because it's not only about the facade, it's also about let me say, the applications um, the users will find in there. And I agree on Antonio, it, it, it's super complex, right? And going back or starting with the user needs to define um, um, a new way of working or whatever, it, it's so complex and it changed all the time. So we at Steelcase, we have um, installed sensors um, around our buildings where we have um, not only to see whether a meeting room is occupied, we would love to understand how 
the meeting room is used for. So, and not only about how many users are in there, but the tools this meeting room provides. Um, is it digital? Is it analog? Is it a standing? Is it a seating? And this is a, a constant learning for us as well. And we discuss it with our customers as well. And it needs further change, like Antonio mentioned earlier, right? It never stops. Yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, Bernard. Uh, Sorry, Bernard, I, I have a I have a question um, regarding you. Um, what do you think? Because you are so um, so so near at the customer. What do you think? For example, three or four um, um, words or themes. What do you think, from your perspective, is um, will be focusing in the near future um, concerning the office spaces? Um, the main themes. Definitely, definitely, to me. Um, the future of real estate and offices will be more digital. So we need to find a way, not only in the um, construction, or let me say in the, in the design phase, construction phase, and so on, also when we operate the building, this needs to become a more digital. What I learned with uh, talking to large corporations around the world that it is so super complex and there is no right or wrong and what maybe runs let me say in Beijing or in Hong Kong might be not running in Bangalore or in Frankfurt right so you really have to see to find the right tools and the right approach per location respecting everything real estate requirements HR requirements IT infrastructure and 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 and, and. so it's it's really complex but this is also the most interesting to me right so there are so many knowledge out there we have so many experience out there let's start now you know um, mm. I, I currently read a book and it's about Shenzhen I have no idea if someone of you have been able to visit Shenzhen that's really the first digital smart city they're having Okay. 30,000 electrical buses running out there, right? And the journey, they, they started 30 years ago, and we are starting now. It, let's start now, and maybe not on the largest scale. Let's start with a small one, and then learn and see how we can extend. Okay. And um, another question, uh, maybe also addressing Jasper. Um, we are we are building um, our office spaces our buildings yeah and then um, in the 80s and the 90s there came the digitalization and uh, it's now established yeah but um what do you think um sometimes i feel when i see the, the floor plans and what the architect is uh, designing yeah, i feel that um, the digitalization um, is more than a um, a gimmick or an add-on to the to the building form. We we've built uh, many centuries, no, not centuries, but many many years uh, before. Yeah, and then we make an add-on. Yeah, with the glass fibers, with the room uh, ventilation and the controlation and so on. Yeah, but what do you think? Do you think that also the architecture must reflect? Um, the ongoing digitalization instead of building old buildings and putting in the digitalization? Yeah, that's, a, that's a good question. That's a bit of the chicken and the egg problem because the, 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 this is a really <laughs> difficult one, It's uh, but I like it. Um, basically, of course, people were, were not completely stupid. So we have been designing buildings in certain ways that they are usable and they are in a way sometimes comfortable maybe now a little bit better because of i don't know what kind of research about users and comfort and energy and whatever um so that's evolving in itself already and like you say digital tools computational tools or design tools that are used as an add-on now i do sense a certain fact that there are some changes in layouts if you would let the computer decide as such you know, like what's most comfortable? What is then a layout of a floor planning? Uh, what is then the shape of your tower? Uh, you see that indeed uh, there is a, a quite some um, like mingling of the, the, the designer's perspective of life, of people, of users. And uh, he, well, not forcefully, but he goes for that vision and aesthetics and that composition. 
And if it's up to like really data-driven decisions, so if you just base it on energy efficiency, comfort, it does not always align. But I think the, the core principles to like the start, like we have to have a core to go up vertically in your building. So let's let's design it. You know, let's let's design an elevator. We have to get up. And uh, those kinds of and it makes sense to put that without daylight, so in the middle. It's it makes kind of sense. So there, there's not not super major changes, but more like on the the layouting, facade width of your uh, window sizes, mm. uh, composition of your mechanical mechanical ventilation, maybe shaft positioning. Like it's more about the efficiency and costs. I think that you can can talk okay. in relation to energy efficiency and comfort. I, I, by the way, I'm back again. Sorry for that. Um, I, I think just to add to, 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 to Jasper's comment, I think there is one important piece still missing, or at least we're just at the beginning of actually having that piece in our hand, and that's data. So we do not have today sufficient data to truly understand how people behave in their offices. When we talk to our employees, when we speak to them and try to figure out how they behave and what they need. We very seldom get the answer what they need. We get the answer what they want. And that's very often a huge difference. And I, and I think that is where I see the biggest potential of digitalization and is collecting true data, how people behave. And with that data, that is where then, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence and all that comes into play that we can analyze this data and make better decisions how offices should be designed and it can be used. Mm. So, so Antonio, that really brings me actually to the last questions that I think we would have needed 10, 10 minutes for the last question, but we only have three left. This is really the next steps that we actually need to take in terms of getting to the next level in terms of digitalization. And I think one of the things you mentioned with actually managing, getting more data first and then knowing how to manage is one of the steps. Are there any other things that you see that we really need to make better use of to, to get ourselves to the next level in terms of um, yeah real estate uh, industry. I I I, I say you know I, I like Bernard's analogy before. I think we just need to start doing it. Yes. <laughs> Let's just start start doing it. And, and, and I am convinced as we start doing it and we start collecting data and we start looking at this data, we will start seeing um insight and draw conclusions we couldn't imagine today right and i think what what we sometimes try to do is to over um define everything right try to define the possible outcomes and so on and i think we need to step back from this let's start collecting data let's start making smart buildings right bring data together and we already have today quite large quantities of data. They all just sit in a silo, not being used, right? Let's start connecting these silos together onto a really this single pane of glass and then start analyzing what truly happens in these buildings. And I think we all are gonna be really surprised what we're gonna find. Uh, uh, do we think um, we... I don't know you because of you know um we have this um workplace study in place where we collect data and when you analyze the data and getting back to the clients and hey guys these are the facts and these are maybe not matching what you hear with your survey sometimes it's really hard right but you know it's there these are the data and with this you will be enabled to take the right decisions maybe not in real time but it enables you to take the right decisions before the future. Um, uh, Antonio, uh, I have one question. You say, okay, collecting data and building uh, better offices or buildings uh, based on these data. But isn't there the danger that, that if you collect these danger, uh, these these data from uh, from your employees, um, that these are data from the past, but you have to build for the future? No, I think it's a combination. I think, no, it is, I, I said it before, right? I think we still need flexible space that can adopt to these changing requirements. Yeah. I think that's the physical piece of it, right? But but I still believe- A carte blanche. Yes, right. But I still believe that 
historic data and having sufficient historic data gives us enough information to predict the future much better than we do today. Because today is mm -hmm. data. Today is based on an assumption or very often of a personal interest of the most senior guy who's driving that project. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a very good point, Antonio. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, I really have to, we have to stop here. Um, I'll make sure next time we get a one and a half hour, two hour time slot. <laughs> we do seem to have a, a lot of topics. Um, I, yeah, thank you all for joining. Uh, it was all uh, very interesting discussions and uh, we'll follow up for sure. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank yeah, you for hosting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yes. Bye bye. 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 Thank <laughs> you.